Today on Scholars Voices, from the Leaders of Africa Institute, we meet James Kwashi. I'm James Kwesi Kwashi from Ghana. I completed my bachelor's in Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where I read Agribusiness Management. It's a program that basically looked at the agri value chain and then how to improve the value of most agri products or the produce that come from the farms in Ghana. After that, I've been interested in research and development research in particular. And for some time now, that's what I've been doing. What are some of the key areas of research you are interested in? And which research questions interest you the most? For the past two to three years, most of the works I've participated in, they are mostly in the area of education and health. But personally, I feel drawn to education because I believe in human capital development, and I see it as a means to solving most of the problems we have in this world. So education is very key. I was reading the UN SDG goals, the 2030 goals, and part of it is quality education and zero poverty and all that. And so I feel that education is key if we want to actually attain these goals that we are talking about. And so in doing that, one research I'm working on currently is I want to look at the relationship between education and graduates unemployment. And in doing that, I'm asking the question, can education or tertiary education actually solve Africa's unemployment issues? What is the potential? Have we explored the potential of tertiary education in Africa or there are some limitations to it? What exactly is it? Because it looks like the number of unemployed graduates keeps increasing by the year. So it means there's something that we are not getting right. I hope to find out some of these things in my research. As you begin this research, what explanations are you exploring to understand the lack of employment for graduates? I've done some review of existing literature and I read a little bit around the human capital development theory. And I also read around the issue of job mismatch. It's one of the theories that have been put out there to explain why we have a lot of graduates being unemployed after school. The whole idea is that a lot of people finish school and then the skills that are actually needed in industry are not what they are completing school with. So they come out of school and then the firms are there. There are things that the firms need to be done. But when they put out job adverts, and this, these graduates apply, they are not able to win the job simply because they don't meet the required skills that the job advertisers are looking for. And another thing also has to do with the fact that normally when the employers pick fresh graduates that don't have the skills that they are looking for, they'll have to train them on the job. And that is also cost to the employer. So it's becoming such a way that these days, a lot of the jobs out there will be requiring for a certain minimum number of work experience, which mostly fresh graduates don't have. So the question is, how are we going to make our graduates to have that experience? Because some of the skills that are needed on the job, is not from academia alone. It's something that can come from personal relations or being on a job or being in the corporate world. These are some of the things that people have tried to put out there to explain why there is a mismatch or why the unemployment issue among graduates is becoming serious. What impact do you hope your research will have on others? I hope that my research should achieve three things. Number one, I want to actually unearth the true potential of tertiary education in Africa. Recently, I was watching a video actually by one professor in Kenya, and he was saying that the issue of tertiary education in Africa is that he calls it the massification of tertiary education. And it's something that has been across all African countries. We've expanded tertiary education in that we take in a lot of students, all because there have been certain programs that have been put out there by a lot of African countries. We are getting more people from secondary schools. So obviously, in order to absorb them, we try to expand tertiary education but we are not putting in place structures to ensure that the masses are trained well and they are positioned for the job market. So that's one thing I hope to achieve in my research. 
Then the second thing is that I hope to bring out in detail the challenges that tertiary education is facing in Africa, particularly for now, I'll be looking at Ghana for this phase of the study. So I will look at the key challenges that teaching and learning is facing in Ghana. And then lastly, I also would want to let my research be a point of reference to a lot of people in that depending on the outcome of the research, it could be a guide to certain people who read my work in how they can either for them to research further or even in deciding what to study in the university or how they can position themselves to make sure that they build certain skills that are required by industry. So basically, those are the three things that I hope to achieve. Why did you decide to apply and enroll in the research methods program with the Leaders of Africa Institute? At first, when I saw the advert on Facebook, I saw it as something that was interesting. The time I saw it, I was on a project. So I wasn't at home. I was in Accra. I was in another region. What happened was that one day I came back from field and I was in my room. That day I closed quite early. Those were the times that I was thinking about what to do next. And with all that I've done in research, I've seen that my path is now being cut out for me in the area of research. So I came back and I decided, let me just send in the application. I spent the evening preparing my documents and then I sent in the application. But one thing that drew me also is the things that we'll be learning, the competences that at the end of the course, we would you know, be able to have some of these skills, especially the quantitative methods and the quantitative analysis methods, which I've heard about R, but I have not read much about it and I've even practiced it before. So when I saw R, I was interested. So all these things you know, made me to decide to send in my applications. And all things being good, one day I was preparing to go to Kumasi. I was still on my way. Then at dawn, around 4 a.m., I received a message that you have been selected to be part of the 15 people who will be starting the program. So basically, that was it for me. And what are some specific things you learned in the research methods program? The first thing has to do with research design. At first, I thought, you know, research design is about you stating that, you know, your research is going to be a case study or qualitative and or quantitative, those things. That was my understanding of research design. I now know that research design is more than that. It includes even the worldview of the researcher. It includes how you are going to protect your respondents when it comes to ethical issues. It includes a whole lot. At first, it was strange for me to spend more than two months designing research. So up to now, even though I've made some progress in my research that I'm working on now, there are still aspects that I'm trying to work on in order to make sure that the process of the research is robust enough. If not, it will be like I've just run through the process and then my findings or my research will not be of great quality. So that's one thing I've learned and it's been a great blessing. And secondly is the R because it's one of the key things that drew me to the program. So learning R and learning some few codes, you type in some few codes and you press enter and then you have your figures and you have your statistics and all that. That's one thing. And then also I love the way we were pushed to interpret our results. You know, it's easy to punch some few codes and you have a figure there, but what does the figure mean? That's one of the things that I have learned. I'm not perfect in that, it's a process. I'm not beginning, so. But now I know how to actually tell a story out of data. I know how to, you know, narrate what actually is happening in data so that somebody who doesn't know what the data is about can know that, oh, so this is the situation. What are some of the strengths of the research methods program? First, I will think of the lecturers. The lecturers are one of the best that you find. I was trying to compare, you know, the way we were treated with how I've been treated, my experience with lecturers over the years. And I realized that it's different. This is more like a one-on-one -on -one time. It's like you are being called into a mentorship program. That's how I see it where the lecturers are not only interested in you coming to class and they teaching you, but then they are interested in everything about you and your career. So to me, I think that is a really strong aspect of the program. And secondly, too, is the delivery of lessons. Though we met, you know, only once a week, but it was intense. Yeah, it was intense. And everything that we needed to know, I think that we've been taught those things. Just that we have to now do the practice and then we have to take it further. So the content is a strong aspect of the course for me. 
and the lecturers, and also the delivery, the delivery of the program content. What are the next steps towards completing the research you have now begun? For now, I have a draft question, which I'm working on to finalize. After finalizing it, I plan to test it with some few people that I will select. And then also after that, I'll go to the main data collection somewhere in February, March. That's what I'm hoping to do. And after that, the journey continues. Thank you, James, for joining Scholars Voices. The Leaders of Africa Institute opens a world of opportunity. Join a Pan-African group of scholars. Learn more. Be mentored. Conduct research for Africa's future.